Hello again everyone, Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about astrology and the Gretchen uh, Whitmer kidnapping plot. Uh, at least it was an alleged one. I do believe it is accurate because uh, this is something that is uh, reported uh, by the FBI that this um, actually was a uh, plot. I do believe strongly that it was uh, to have her uh, kidnapped. And apparently this was by some uh, militia group. And I guess it may have been people that were adversarial to her uh, political views. Now I'm going to talk about some transits and natal placements in her chart that may have been uh, tied into this. First, though, I want to talk about a little bit about her natal chart, just in, in general, you know, aside from uh, this kidnapping plot. Uh, the first thing is she has a sun in Virgo and moon in Libra and an Aries uh, ascendant. And when you look at uh, the sun, moon, and ascendant in astrology, it's pretty much a systematic breakdown begins with the sun energy flavored by the moon and then uh, the ascend well the ascendant is what flavors those energies and starting with her uh, sun in virgo which is in the in, in her success the sun in virgo can be about working laboriously sometimes relentlessly and having the moon in libra this could be about matters with law and justice she was a uh, she was some kind of a, a attorney at uh, one time and in doing so with an Aries ascendant with a lot of courage and fortitude and and wanting to fight and in fighting for justice is something that seems to be synonymous with her nature moon and Libra Aries ascendant right there that could manifest in just the, the moon the emotional need for justice and doing so uh, with an Aries ascendant by fighting uh, for this and the thing about uh, this is that when I look at um, you know, as far as I, I want to talk about another thing I found interesting too. The little talk about a few things before we go to uh, as far as her kidnapping and, and tra well the plot to have her kidnapped I should say and transits and natal placements that may be connected with it in her chart. Uh, something I noted well actually. I am going to talk about something related to her kidnapping first. Is that a uh, kidnapping? Uh, she's got an interesting stellium in her chart, and it starts with uh, Pluto, followed by the Moon, ending with Uranus. And when you look at a, a stellium in astrology, again, it, it's broken down uh, very systematically. You start out, and basically the stellium, the series of conjunctions, uh, in it's at least three planets. In this case. It starts out with Pluto, then the Moon, then Uranus, and the stellium basically what it forms is an astrological statement beginning with the first planet and then ending and culminating with the final planet. Now Pluto, interestingly, is the first planet in a series of conjunctions. She has Pluto in Virgo, and Pluto can be about abductions and kidnappings, then followed by the Moon. Interestingly enough, the, then then uh, the moon can be associated with the public. This is something that went very publicly, and then ending with uh, with Uranus and Libra, and it's something now that this there's a lot of. I mean, Libra can be about cooperation. Uranus social media. This is something that not only went on social media, but it's getting cooperation from Facebook that. Is uh, because this was uh, a, involving a group, uh, a covert or private group on Facebook, and uh, you could say Facebook being social media, Uranus can be connected with the internet. And social media uh, is showing cooperation, and cooperation, of course, is synonymous with Libra. So that is one way how that stellium worked out for her, I think, and then. Something else is interesting too, the fact that she w did work as an attorney at one time and looking at, I think a lot of this plays into, it is, correlates with that stellium she has in her chart. Now again, the, the stellium starts out with Pluto. Pluto can be about power and then followed by the moon, something that could be pu very public and also an emotional need for matters with the law and justice. 
and then ending with Uranus, it's interesting because she got this position in an unorthodox manner. Uranus can be about uh, unorthodox, unusual energy. And she managed, she had a position as an attorney because what happened was the person that had that position previously uh, had left due to uh, allegedly being involved in some criminal activity. So I thought it was very interesting how the stellium shows it could manifest in multiple ways uh, with her. Now, and now another thing uh, that could be tied in with this, um, you know, her kidnapping, plot to be kidnapped, it's interesting is that she has uh, the asteroid Ceres in Capricorn in the 10th house. Now, Ceres can be about abductions and kidnappings. Of course, Ceres can be associated with the government and also very premeditative energy. This was something that was likely very planned very deeply, something that was premeditative, and it was likely due to her governmental uh, beliefs in being in the 10th house. It would be something that would gain a lot of notoriety, exposure, and recognition. Now, another thing is that she had transit series in Aquarius at this time in the 12th house. Now, Ceres um, in Aquarius, I mean, can manifest in kidnappings that could be very group related. This was by a group, it was some kind of militia group, I believe. Being in the 12th house, this was done very, the planning was very covert, done very covertly. It was done through social media, through, a, you know, well, at least part of it was planned through apparently a secret Facebook group. And, the, and it's in, and the transit is in her 12th house of the hidden and hidden adversaries. Another thing, too, is, is that it's very, um, it's very, uh, it was obviously really auspicious that this was caught, you know, this, um, this plan, uh, this, this plot to, um, you know, allegedly kidnap her. Uh, what was caught earlier than later because I noticed too she has a disturbing transit uh, transit Chiron in Aries is in very close proximity to her natal ascendant in Aries and when you have you're talking about Chiron can be about physical wounds in some cases the ascendant is of course the physical body and and being in Aries this could have been about injuries to her head her face her eyes could have been done through gunfire, through very violent means. You're talking about the militia. Aries is about militant energy. And uh, she also has transit Mars and Aries in the first house, which could be an indicator and can manifest again another form of violence to the physical body, which could be done in Aries through gunfire or through some weapons, through some cutting instruments like a knife. Now, uh, another thing I'm noticing too is that when, as far as a transit goes, interestingly enough, I, I was talking before about her having the natal uh, Ceres and Capricorn in the 10th house. She had transit Jupiter not far from that. And Jupiter, as I've talked about in previous videos, can be very paradoxical, could be very strongly benign and benevolent but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. It can exacerbate. And this can enlarge, this may very well have enlarged issues with a very planned or premeditated uh, kidnapping, which we would have gained a lot of notoriety, exposure, and recognition. The plan for this gained a lot of recognition, of course. Now, um, the thing that I noticed too, with her, I mean, this was something, I mean, she obviously is exhibiting a lot of the Aries um, outward uh, ascendant energy, I mean, because the ascendant is associated with the outer demeanor, it's the energy that we could project very readily uh, to others, that's energy, those are qualities and attributes that can be naturally expressed, and According to, there was a video I saw on YouTube, and the title, I forget the exact title, but it was something about that um, that uh, Gretchen Whitmer was giving scathing uh, remarks to uh, Donald Trump, 
that were addressed to him. Now, um, another thing that I've noticed in her chart too, in a transit, she has transit Venus right now, not far from her natal Mercury. So this is about can manifest in the valuing of very analytical, detailed communications at this time. Having Mercury in Virgo, she obviously, I mean, to me, is about, I mean, really not missing much it's mentally because Virgo, Mercury is, of course, it's in its dignity in Virgo, and Mercury and Virgo can discern things very well, decipher things, be very analytical in their communications, be very punctilious with details, probably has a good ability to solve problems. But a thing that I've noticed, too, in her chart, which is, uh, you know, there's some, you know, obviously all charts have some contraindicators, but this seems to be, to me, a big one. She has the sun in frugal Virgo, but she has Venus, which is about spending, is in is in uh, Leo. And she has it at 29 degrees, and I see 29 degrees in astrology, and we know it's a critical degree, it's an anoretic degree. But it's also, uh, it also it can represent the full culmination of the planet in sign. Hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that. I'm back. Now, anyway, and the thing um, with the Venus, and it also makes a tight conjunction uh, to her sun. So the sun in Virgo may very readily shine the light on actually more extravagant energy than the typical sun in Virgo. And remember, Venus at 29 degrees can be very distorted because I, it's, it, I mean, it's, I see it as the full culmination of the planet in sign. It could give very extravagant energy, but also, um, it really, um, I mean, dominant and being Leo dominant energy, valuing, you know, maybe dominance being in the sixth house of, of work and employment and showing that on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and having the Aries rising could show very strong leadership capabilities very outwardly. But also, too, uh, being that, you know, Venus and... Uh, you know, Venus and, and Leo, it's also, remember, 29 degrees is a crisis degree, and that could be Venus is about peace. And take, she probably takes a lot of pride in her peace, given that it's 29 degrees, uh, Venus and Leo. And I just thought that energy was very interesting, and she has... Uh, I mean, it tells me, I mean, Democrats anyway are going to be more extravagant than then I'd say Republicans on average are more about spending, and I'm sure you know, there's, there's certain value in certain ex, in, in extravagance to some degree, but having it 29 degrees can be very, uh, very inflated. Now, trying to see if there's anything else that you know, looking at her chart that I wanted to talk about. Well, another thing I noticed she has is that at this time she also has transit uh, Mercury uh, Mercury in Scorpio in the seventh house of open enemies. So there's no surprises in communication about abduction from what could be seen as an open enemy, but at the same time, they're open. The enemy is uh, the open adversary, is that uh, that would be true now. But oddly enough, she has the transit Neptune in the twelfth house of hidden adversaries. So it shows at this time that maybe it was causing um, these, the transit Neptune is really, is where um, maybe hidden adversaries might have been driving her. You could say not literally crazy, figuratively crazy, but it shows that the hidden enemies could also be uh, Neptune related people. It could be people that are, uh, it could be people that are involved in, um, in drugs or alcohol related people people dealing with chemicals or people um, you know they're involved in pharmaceutical drugs anything that could be uh, Neptune uh, related just very deceptive uh, duplicitous uh, people it could be people that are involved in dancing or poetry or anything that could be uh, 
anything that could be Neptune uh, related and she may be dealing with some chaos in her private life at this time as well uh, talking about having uh, transit Neptune in uh, the 12th house so anyway people I really think there's much more I want to get the only other thing I'm saying is that well transit Sun is in her seventh house of open adversary so this is where Sun is about to focus this is also uh, about shining the light on open uh, on open enemies as well and it's interesting in, in, in the fact that this is in you know, the Libra the sign of the law shows there's going to be you know obviously the, these people I think at least some of them have been apprehended and, and have been identified at this point and they will be and sure prosecuted to uh, the false likely another thing I notice I want to say in her chart is that she does have I mean uh, the, she has Uranus in opposition to her ascendant so it shows that there could be some people that could be you know, at open adversaries that are group related group related open adversaries very strong opposition to what she's projecting um, projecting outwardly in a lot of that Aries a lot of that combative maybe the that fearless energy that very courageous energy that she an outspoken energy that she's projecting very uh, very naturally so those are um, those are some ways that I mean looking at her uh, chart talking about some natal placements and transits that could be tied into her uh, the subduction kidnapping plot and also just about how um, and about how she is just in general in her chart so anyway people that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment until next time people everyone learn to say instead of